was an offensive showdown Tuesday night in Buffalo with the Bulls defeating Miami 51-42. Now it's the Battle of the Bricks as Miami entertains the Ohio University Bobcats in Wednesday night in action. Chuck Martin talks about both games next on Red Hawk Football Weekly. This is Red Hawk Football Weekly. Brought to you by G&J Pepsi-Cola of Hamilton. Refreshing Southwestern Ohio since 1939. By Koenig Equipment. Found online at KoenigEquipment.com. By Marathon. Fueling the American spirit. By Bud Light. Reminding you to enjoy responsibly among friends. Steve Baker talks with Miami head football coach Chuck Martin after this on Red Hawk Football Weekly. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health, healthcare for the universe of you. Pizza with Pepsi. Delicious. Pepsi's always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. Football Weekly, the Red Hawks were on the road this past Saturday at Buffalo. 51-42 was the final score. Buffalo wins the shootout at UB Stadium. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. Head coach Chuck Martin joins me as uh, we'll recap this game. And uh, coach, uh, just an offensive shootout, both sides, uh, really a battle of quarterbacks on that night. Yeah, obviously both offenses have a big night. Um, we start off really fast, drive down and score right off to start the game. They respond two plays later on a scramble play and throw the ball over our head. And that's kind of how the night went. Uh, offense blocked tremendously well uh, against a Buffalo defense that had not given up much rushing or much points the whole year. We blocked them up very well. We ran the ball very effectively. We threw the ball very effectively. Obviously, Gus had a huge day. Obviously, Kenny and Zoe had huge days for us. Defensively, uh, give up the big play early make them drive the ball pretty much the rest of the night. The story for the defense really is frustrating. Third down, nine for 14 on third down. All the other scoring drives throughout the game, we have chances to get off the field. We have to be better on third down situations. Jackson hurt us. We knew he was a great player coming in, 20 touchdowns uh, via the air, and he had multiple touchdowns rushing going in. So uh, he really hurt us on third down. He scrambled for first downs. He bought time, threw the ball for first down. So the uh, story of the game defensively was – Good enough on first and second down and not close to good enough on third down and, and, and got, got back in the game in the second half, got it tied at 42, and then he couldn't close it out. You were talking in your press conference about the quarterbacks in this conference. Obviously, you're getting ready to face another really good quarterback against Ohio, but sometimes a guy like Jackson seems to me that's something you just obviously can't duplicate in your scout teams because this guy can run, he can throw, he's going to scramble, he's going to make plays, make plays for Buffalo. Yeah, and he's, a, he's obviously a great player. They're 7-1 they're and one coming in. He's having a tremendous year. And he's crazy athletic for 6-7, crazy strong arm, which we knew going in. We talked all week he's going to make his plays, but we got to get stops and find, find ways mm -hmm. to get stops. And it, it's not about how many, how many, but kind of when you get your stops and give your offense opportunities to, to, to keep scoring and, and win the game. Um, unfortunately for us, we didn't get enough stops, and right. clearly on third down. His ability to buy time and add, add plays that we defend well, which he does every week, not just against us. That you defend the initial pass, everybody's covered, then he finds ways to, and he did it again on Tuesday night and did a great job. The first half, uh, like the rest of the game, began with a bang as we take a look at the first half highlights in this opening kickoff, and Maurice Thomas gets you off to a great start. All right, yeah, Maurice, this one does kind of on his own. You're going to see he gets hit here right at the 17-yard line, breaks two tackles, and then he turns what should have been a very short return into a huge return and getting great starting field position around the 38-yard line. Around the 38-yard line, uh, it'll bring up second and eight, and immediately to the air, and Gus finds Andrew Homer. Yeah, nice job, plaction pass, hits Homer down the middle for one of our many chunk plays on the night. And you were able to uh, you know, pass the ball uh, you know, 
almost to everybody throughout the night as you take a look at that uh, pass play to Andrew Homer one more time. Third and 11 now from the UB 40, and uh, Jack Sorensen gets his first catch. Yeah, really nice job. Got a screen pass, got Lyman out in front, picking up blocks. Jack getting us the first down uh, on, a, on a third and long. And again, both teams are really good on third down. That's why the game was as high scoring as yeah. it was. And this is one of really good execution, really good play call on third and 10. Got him dropping in a soft coverage and hit him with the screen pass. Just shy of the first down, but you go to Alonzo Smith and having that power back in this game was huge for you, I think. Yeah, great push up front. Uh, Fourth and obviously less less than less than a yard. We get a clear push up front, and Zoe just puts his head down and, and gets a first down fairly easily. And that sets up Gus Raglan for 27 yards. Your first score of the game comes off the feet of the quarterback. Yeah, and little misdirection. Everybody's trying to stop Maurice Thomas on the on, on the sweep play. Their defense is running left uh, to their left. We're going to their right, and Gus puts on a little burst here and and scores fairly easily, basically untouched from about 26 yards. Great run by Gus as he dives for the pylon there. Miami takes a 7-0 lead. Buffalo would score and make it a 7-7 ball game on the next possession. Again, Gus Raglan on the rush. This one for eight yards, and Jack Sorensen with a great block to get him a couple of more. Yeah, great job by Gus. We talk about their quarterback ad living and making something out of nothing. Our quarterback does it every week, and mm -hmm. people people know what it's like to try to defend Gus. There's well-defended pass. Gus tucks and gets a first down. Obviously picks up a great block by Jack Sorensen, uh, showing receivers can be physical too. And picks up the first down there. Uh, one more look at it there. Second and six coming up for Miami. The Red Hawks are out at their own 45-yard line, and this is Kenny Young for 26 yards. Again, nice job on play action. Nice job, Gus, reading it. Find the open man. Hits Kenny. Kenny with another big night for us. You would get an additional 15 yards out of this, as you'll see the end zone view here. Uh, Buffalo called for roughing the passer and tack on 15 to that. And you're in the red zone and in business, and it'll be Alonzo Smith taking it in from two yards out. Again, really good push up front. Good job by Zoe hitting it north and south. And great answer by our offense. Buffalo scores again, makes it 14-14 as you take a look at the Lonzo Smith uh, touchdown. Uh, both teams forced to punt for the first time in this game. And when Buffalo punts, you get a big special team play. Yeah, Doug Costin weren't punts safe. We got four D linemen rushing. Doug Costin splits their personal protectors, gets his hand out, and, and he gets us a huge field position swing, get the ball in the 18-yard line for our offense. Just a huge push up the middle by the big man, Doug Costin, gets the left mid on it, and uh, Miami would start at the uh, UB 18 as you look at it one more time, and Alonzo Smith on his second straight seven-yard pickup for the Red Hawks. Again, nice job up front creating space. Zoe always finds holes. They don't have to be very big. He's got great vision, great feel, always patient. Does a great job here, and uh, offensive line is really doing a nice job. Gus Raglan, second touchdown of the game. Uh, thank you, Nate Becker and uh, Alonzo Smith for the extra push. Yeah, and it's staying after it up front. Initial surge wasn't there, and then we keep driving our feet. Old lineman keep pushing in front. Becker and Zoe keep pushing from behind. You see a secondary surge by Tommy Doyle and Homer and all the boys, and we get across the goal line. 21-14, Buffalo would score and make it a 21-21 football game. And uh, uh, the Red Hawks uh, would be uh, forced to uh, punt the ball away later on. But on the kickoff after Buffalo scores, Miami gets a 49-yard uh, return uh, from Jalen Bester. And again, that one blocked and blocked well. Yeah, nice job here. Uh, very well blocked up front. Bester finds the crease. You're trying to always create a scene with the kick out. Bester finds and rips it for 49 yards. Yeah, you, you miss a 50-yard field goal try. Sam Sloman was wide left with it. Buffalo would score and it'd be 28-21 at the break and uh, gives you guys 15 minutes, at least 20 minutes, to catch your breath because the offense have been just going and going and going. Yeah, really tough at the end. We had short field, didn't convert. They get a short field. We look like we're off the field. We get a PI call. Right. Then we get an interception. We look like we're off the field again, get another holding call. Uh, two penalties that kept that drive alive. Instead of being 21-21 at half, we're down 28-21. We'll come back and recap the second half of the game against Buffalo a little later on. We will preview the Ohio University Bobcats and the Battle of the Bricks coming up Wednesday night. Stay tuned. You're watching Red Hawk Football Weekly. On a forbidden Fansville by Dr. Pepper. Ramon, we can't. But Julia, we're rivals. I can love you and still hate your overrated school. We have two different defensive philosophies. You're a base for a three cover two, and I'm an aggressive a three four with press coverage. I get it. But we both love Dr. Pepper. Oh, Ramon. Touchdown, State! Yes! 
in your face! Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Mountain Dew Ice, a clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. Hawk Football Weekly, the Red Hawks were on. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly is brought to you by Courtyard Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. Hello again and welcome back to Red Hawk Football Weekly, recapping Miami's 51-42 loss on the road at Buffalo uh, last Tuesday night uh, against the Bulls. And Coach, uh, you go into the locker room down a touchdown. Uh, the unfortunate part about that is, is obviously Buffalo is going to get the ball in the second half. They won the toss. and. Uh, they come out and again, uh, it's so tough to stop that defense, uh, or stop that offense, and they score and make it a two touchdown ball game, putting, I think, a lot of pressure to start the half on your team. Yeah, and we need to stop, start the second half. They come out, hit a big play to Johnson, their go to receiver. Mm -hmm. We had a pretty well defended. Johnson out fights us for the football. Uh, and they go up they go up two scores, but we know we can score and there's still plenty of time left in the game. What what were you talking about, you know, particularly with the defense? And, uh, you know, obviously it was a struggle all night long. What were you talking about at the half with those guys? Biggest thing is just finding ways to get stops. And we were already talking about third down because the third down conversion, we were talking about penalties. Um, we had a couple, you know, very, very minor penalties mm -hmm. that were called in the first half. We, you know, you want to be aggressive, but they're kind of calling the game that way. Right. But we got to get off the field on third down. We know it's both teams are going to keep scoring, so it just matter who can get a couple stops is probably going to win the game. And the Red Hawks uh, would answer that pressure, as a matter of fact. After the Bulls uh, go up 14, the Red Hawks on their very first possession. As we take a look at those highlights, Gus Raglan finds Jack Sorensen right off the bat. Yeah, good job. Again, good read. Good throw and catch. Jack gets behind the defense. Gus throws a strike. Plenty of protection in front of him. And uh, we're, we're in great field position after one snap. And again, you see uh, Raglan, and, and again, putting it right where only Jack could catch up with that one. 44 yards to the University of Butlo, Buffalo, 43. And then right back to Sorensen again. This one uh, gets uh, away from one and gets inside the 30. Yeah, Jack does about once a week. Catches a short pass, makes the first guy miss, and and turns it into a big chunk play for us. And uh, good throw by Gus here away from the defense. Really good by Jack coming to get it, as usually makes the first guy miss. Push four gets us a nice first down. Then Gus again picking up the first down for you here on second and 11, or second and 14. He gets 12, just a couple of yards shy of the first down, excuse me. Yeah, again, using the misdirection. They had everybody running out with the jet sweeps, using misdirection. Really good scheme by our offensive coaches. Great blocking up front. Great run by Gus. One of the best runs of the night. Uh, first and 10 from the Buffalo 17, Alonzo Smith. Yeah, good job push inside. Zoe always patient. Bounces the outside. Looks like he's tackled here. The guy spins him around. He lands on him. Keeps going for another 10 yards. Highlight real run for Zoe. He's done that so many times in his career at Miami. You know, it's interesting. You'll, you'll get another look at it here. Uh, uh, the officials right on this one. Uh, just being able to sit down on the defender and still keep going. And he takes it inside the five-yard line, and he gets the reward with a one-yard touchdown run. Yeah, awesome push here. Uh, very, very rarely you're going to go on from the one standing up on, uh, untouched, but you do here. You'll see a giant seam from this call. Zoe finds a hole, but that's as big a hole as you're ever going to find down the goal line. Absolutely. You know, you talk about this team fighting. Buffalo scores again, takes a 42-28 lead, and the Red Hawks come right back. They'll begin the drive. This is third and eight at the 27, and Sorensen uh, picks up the first yard, uh, yeah, first huge, down. Huge third down conversion. Again, Gus finding the open man. Really good protection again up front. Great job by Jack. Not the greatest throw, but Jack goes down and catches it and gets us a key first down. Second and five coming up from the 41. One of the best deep balls I've seen uh, Gus throw, and he finds Kenny Young for 59. Yeah, great job by Kenny. Use his speed. Again, we talk about Kenny's versatility every week. Use him as a running back. Use him as a receiver. Gus throws it over his head for a touchdown where we've cut the lead back down to seven. Yeah, it's back down to seven. You'll get a look at it here from the end zone. And a great throw in stride. Kenny Young is able to grab this one and take it into the end zone from 59 yards out. Extra points good. Then you call on Sam Sloman for the onside. Yeah, it just felt like we had to try to steal possession. We've been down 14, cut it to seven. Neither team stopping. Nice kick to an open area. We got a bunch of guys over there. Nigel Adams, Trey Banks keeps it alive. Then Nigel Adams falls on it. So... 
Uh, just felt like we had to do something to get the ball back for our offense and not give it to Buffalo's offense. This was a huge momentum swing for us, obviously, in the football. It game. really was. It got you back on schedule because your offense takes advantage of that onside kick. Kenny Young for 15 on third and eight. Yeah. Last time Kenny had it was a post route for a touchdown. Now we're using him as a running back, showing his crazy versatility. Great up the middle, and that's really where the run game was for the most part for the Red Hawks was between the tackles. And again, a little jump cut gets him free for the first down, a 15-yard carry. Then Nate Becker will get the call, and he makes a great catch down near the goal line. Yeah, good throw and catch again. We fake the screen. We throw the launch play to Becker. Great throw by Gus. Fantastic contested catch by Becker, and we're back in business inside the two. You'll see how good this is on this, on this angle as uh, he goes behind the defender to catch this one and come down inbounds. Just a very nice catch by Nate Becker, and that'll set up the touchdown uh, for the Miami Redhawks. And the Redhawks uh, will take it into the end zone here and, uh, again, tie the football game up at 42 as Gus Ragland gets the call. Yeah, great job up front. Again, Gus goes in standing up from the one-yard line, which is tough to do. And we, with the huge onside kick, now we've got the game 42-42 going into the fourth quarter. 42-42 going into the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, everything seemed to be going well. But, again, Buffalo had something to say about that. And, uh, they, they, you know, you just, after that touchdown, just couldn't get back into the end zone. Yeah, we got it. The next series, we get a stop. Get yeah. the ball back to our offense at 42-42. They, they get a good stop and force a punt. We need to get another stop at that point. We don't. They drive down and score to make it 48-42. At that point, we're getting late. Our offense still has a chance to go down and mm -hmm. take a lead, and we, we get stopped on fourth down, and, and, and that's basically the end of the game. At the end of the game there. 51-42 is the final, and uh, Miami will be at home on Wednesday night taking on the Ohio University Bobcats. And uh, uh, coming out of that game, obviously you mentioned you lose uh, DeAndre Montgomery in that game, and uh, the defense has been so beat up. Uh, uh, tough to get these guys rested and recovered because they're always out there right now yeah we don't we've lost a lot of depth we've lost starters so yeah we we got guys that are playing a lot of snaps but yeah. um we're we're capable of playing better football that's not an excuse for sure, how we play sure. defensively and like i said we're getting a really potent offense to third down we got to do a better job on third down we got to look at everything we're doing on third down mm -hmm. we got to execute better um so it, it's we, we've had we've been beat up there for a long time. We've played really good defense for, for most of the second half of the season. So we've got enough quality players still. Obviously, our offense is playing very well, and we're going to have to get more stops against OU if we plan on beating them. A lot to play for against OU in the final three games of this season for a regular season for the Miami Red Hawks. We'll come back, preview the game against the Bobcats as we return in a moment here on Red Hawks Football Weekly. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly has been brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health, healthcare for the universe of you. On a forbidden Vansville by Dr. Pepper, Ramon, we can't. 
But Julia. My rifles. I can love you and still hate your overrated school. We have two different defensive philosophies. You're a base four, three cover two, and I'm an aggressive three four with press coverage. I get it. But we both love Dr. Pepper. Oh, Ramon. Touchdown, State! Yes! Into your face! Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Welcome back into Red Hawk Football Weekly, our final segment for this week, and uh, previewing the game coming up on Tuesday night at Jaeger Stadium, the battle for the bricks. It is Miami versus Ohio. Steve Baker here along with head coach Chuck Martin. And coach, uh, before we talk about the Bobcats, three games remaining in the regular season, and I know talk to the players, talk to you at uh, Hawk Talk, that uh, each game is kind of like its own season. You have to take it one game at a time, get things done, and it starts Wednesday against the Bobcats. Yeah, and we're sitting three and two in the league, and uh, whoever wins this game is going to be in second place all by themselves and still have a chance. So this is a huge game for us. Obviously, we got three big conference games left. We got the Battle of Bricks against our big rival. And like I said, there's, we have tons of Miami fans that follow everything we do. And then we have a bunch of other Miami fans that just follow when we play Cincinnati and OU because those are two two most hated rivals. So it's a huge game for us. It's a huge game. Gus really has never played against OU. Right. He's been hurt the last two years, so he's excited about an opportunity to actually be in the Battle of the Bricks. Um, and we're trying to get to 4-2 and two in the conference. And if we get to 4-2 and two in the conference, uh, it sets up a big game on the road the following week against Northern Illinois. Absolutely. As the Bobcats come in here, one of the more potent offenses again in the conference. And uh, uh, Nathan Roark just has a, an arsenal of weapons with him, but he's dangerous enough. Yeah, now it all starts with a run game. They're very similar yeah. to us, not, not the same types of runs, but they run and play action, use their run game to set up their pass game, and their pass game is very good, but it all starts big offensive line, two quality tailbacks, and, a, and they run a bunch of scoop option. They run a bunch of zone read stuff. So he's got 66 carries for 670 yards on the mm. year. for So he's averaging over 10 yards a carry if you take away sacks, which aren't designed runs, obviously. Right. Uh, Irons and Alouette are great tailbacks and have been there, both seniors behind experience offense line. Then obviously on the perimeter, you got Poppy White, who's been one of the best skill guys in this league, returner, receiver, reverse guy combination that's been much like our Kenny Young, just a mm -hmm. big play waiting to happen. So they've got a bunch of weapons. They're scoring a bunch of points, creating a bunch of yards, and they're playing really solid defense. Defensively, uh, they lost a couple of keys right in the middle of that defense, but they have been getting better and better as the season's gone on. Yeah, no, and they lost some great players last last year. They're, you know, they're Mike and their Sam were two of the best players in our league, and they've replaced with young guys, and those young guys have come on, and particularly since conference play, they've been, been very stingy on defense. Uh, they're always stout against a run. They're always physical they always like to pressure you up the middle so there's a lot of things on our play for offense and obviously we need our offense to keep playing the same way they've been absolutely defensively uh looking for something to build confidence i would imagine early in that game you're really going to go out there and get after them yeah I mean, we've had again the the biggest thing is you know since the first half of marshall we've played really good defense the last eight weeks we've had two games where we didn't defend yeah, the pass yeah. well we had a game earlier this year against Western Michigan where we didn't defend the pass well, and we bounced back the next two weeks and played really good defense. So our kids still have confidence. They still know uh, they know there's things that they need to correct from 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 last Tuesday night, and particularly on third down. But we got to try to stop a potent running attack. It's a different style of offense than Buffalo. So although you, you got to correct some areas, you still got some other areas you got to be concerned with. Coach, uh, wish you the best of luck on Wednesday night against the Bobcats. Thanks. Head coach Chuck Martin joining us, and that'll do it for this week's edition of Red Hawk Football Weekly. Uh, again, uh, game time at as we're taping this has not been announced. It'll either be 7 or 8 o'clock on Wednesday night at Jaeger Stadium. We'll have it for you. Myself, Terry Bridge, and Randy Hollowell will have it for you on the Miami IMG Sports Network. Until next week, I'm Steve Baker for head coach Chuck Martin. Thanks for watching Red Hawk Football Weekly. This has been Red Hawk Football Weekly. Brought to you by G&J Pepsi-Cola of Hamilton. Refreshing Southwestern Ohio since 1939. By Koenig Equipment. Found online at KoenigEquipment.com. By Marathon. Fueling the American spirit. By Bud Light. Reminding you to enjoy responsibly among friends. Red Hawk Football Weekly is a sports production of Miami University and IMG College. Pizza with Pepsi. 
delicious. Pepsi's always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health. Healthcare for the universe of you.